Hi, okay, so today I want to talk about uh, safety. And I want to talk about how that contributes to phobias, anxiety, agoraphobia, pain syndrome, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, chronic illness. Um, okay, so those are big, that's, that's a lot, okay. And there's probably more. But I want to talk about how your sense of safety contributes to these problems that you probably may be experiencing. And sorry, my dogs are play fighting here. So if you can hear them ruffling around, that's what they're doing. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a video on all of these. I want to do a video on all of these separate syndromes. Um, generalized anxiety, phobias, agoraphobia. So they're in a category kind of to themselves. And I want to talk about that because I suffered with that severely in my early 20s. And having overcome all that, I understand what happened, what the patterns were, how to overcome things. And then, more recently, as I have had and suffered with chronic illness, chronic pain, uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, etc., 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 I can see there are similar patterns. Uh, similar things that are locking me into these patterns, let's just say, and that lock other people, many people, into these patterns. Okay, so it all comes down to your sense of safety and your sympathetic nervous system. So, if you're suffering with one of these things, you probably think that you have something majorly wrong with you, something at a cellular level, something, um, a mental disorder, a physical diagnosis. You think you've got some either mental or physical condition, uh, and that's not probably the case. What you have is a conditioning experience and a pattern repetition that is caused uh, within your nervous system that has caused this syndrome, okay? That has caused this condition, that has caused whatever the thing that you have been diagnosed with. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about this at a general level and then I'll go do videos on specifics. Let's talk about a general level. Okay, so if you feel, if you don't feel safe, okay, if you have anxiety, if you have chronic fatigue, if you have a pain, if you have a chronic illness, if you have a mental condition, okay, you probably have been not feeling safe. You probably don't feel safe. You probably uh, leave your house and worry. You worry about what's going to happen. You worry about what's going to happen in the future. You, um, you feel upset all the time. You feel worried. You feel stressed out. You feel... Um, you're heightened. So what's happened to you is that your nervous system has been conditioned, okay? In a very systematic way, sometimes with a shock, sometimes with a trauma, and sometimes over a long period of conditioning where you have to fight, flight, flee, or freeze. So if you've gotten into a car accident, or if you've had a gunshot wound or if you had an accident or if you had somebody rape you or abuse you uh, molest you if you've had an incident okay this is what's known as a trauma so it's a big event it's a trauma maybe you've been to war maybe you've been a soldier maybe whatever it is you've you've experienced a traumatic event or several traumatic events. But the shock trauma is usually one big, huge traumatic event. Something that's like a, like a patterning or a conditioning of trauma is you're abused mentally or physically on an ongoing basis. You have been in several car accidents. You had one sickness after the other, after the other, after the other, and now you're in a chronic illness. So. What's happened to you is not a big shock trauma, but it's several, many, many, many events linked together to cause an overall trauma or an arcing trauma. So you, if you at war, maybe it wasn't the one bomb going off, it was 
every day, seeing uh, people get killed, um, this bomb killing other people, uh, having to run for your life, having to flee, having to fight, whatever, right? So it can be a shock, it can be a major shock, or it can be a whole bunch of events that link together to form a trauma in your body. And, sorry, I'm just gonna take a drink. Okay, so that in itself would cause anybody's nervous system to turn on. So up until this point, you're living your life, you're going along, assuming that you don't have all these childhood traumas, that you've been abused, you've been uh, molested, you, you know, one trauma after the other, uh, you've had all of these people treating you badly, poorly, um, mental abuse, you know, you've been verbally abused, on and on and on and on, right? Then that's a childhood trauma and you need to deal with childhood trauma. But let's just assume that your life was fairly decent, uh, and it wasn't traumatic, you've had bad things happen or whatever, but you didn't experience what they would call a trauma. Okay, so you're going along in your life and suddenly something happens or a series of events happen that leave you traumatized, that cause a traumatic patterning in your system. Okay, and what happens is just like if you were walking in the woods every day, you did a loop, around a, a specific trail every day um, and nothing really happened and then one day you saw a pack of coyotes okay suddenly your nervous system would be alerted now if they scurried off and um, nothing ever came of it and you turned around or whatever and then the next time you might be cautious you might be cautious every time um, but if you never see them again likely nothing um, is going to come of that, right? But say that pack of coyotes turns and starts to chase you or attack you or whatever. Now your nervous system is alerted. That woods isn't safe. I can't walk in those woods. I'll never be able to walk in any woods again. Anytime I'm outside, I'm scanning. Is there coyotes? Is there coyotes? Will I be attacked by coyotes, right? So suddenly before, You'd never thought of a coyote. It didn't enter into the picture. And now, every time you're walking, you've dealt with the event, you've healed from the event, um, you're aware that you're in a spot uh, that doesn't even have coyotes, you're out in, in neighborhoods walking around, there's houses, it's the middle of the day, okay, but your mind is still scanning. Your mind is still turned on, scanning for coyotes. And maybe you're okay, and maybe it's in the background. Okay, but maybe it was traumatic enough event that it's in the foreground. Okay, so you're consciously scanning and you're distracted by what other people are saying and you can't really have a conversation. Um, you can't go on about your natural walking because this is in the forefront, okay? So sometimes it's in the forefront, which is um, a bigger problem and sometimes it's in the background you're still able to carry on a conversation, you're still able to listen to a podcast or listen to your music or go on the walk, but it's in the background, right? You're, you you don't always consciously know that you're scanning for coyotes, but if a branch snaps or if you see a dog run by, your brain suddenly is alerted and you're thinking about, is there coyotes, right? So it can be in the foreground, it can be in the background, um, and if it's in the background and you're still able to go on about your business, you're likely going to get over that. The trauma is likely not going to ruin your life. If it's in the foreground, you have a big problem. You've got to get over it because it's distracting you. It's in front of you. It's distracting you from living your life. And then there's the worst case scenario where now it stops you. Okay, You freeze. You're frozen in your tracks. You're so alert to whether there is a pack of coyotes or whether that sound was a coyote or whether that movement was a coyote or whether um, you're safe enough, if you're safe, right, that you're stopped. And you say, I don't think it's safe to walk. I'm not going to walk. I'm rather going to stay in the house. Unless I'm with a group of people, I can't walk. You start to have rules. Unless, 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 unless. Unless it's the middle of the day. Unless I have friends. Unless... Um, it's a populated neighborhood in less, right? But there's a whole bunch of things that you won't do. So usually that, that ruins a person's life then because now they can't even do the activity, right? 
So background, foreground, and stops you from doing it all together. Okay, so this is, um, I will do another video, but this is what I mean when I say this is the same pattern, whether you're dealing with a specific phobia, whether you have generalized anxiety, whether you are agoraphobic, whether you have a pain syndrome, whether you have a chronic illness that will not heal no matter what you do, whether you have fibromyalgia, whether you have a chronic, some sort of chronic thing that you cannot get over. This is the same patterning, right? So think about your specific problem. It's either, okay, something has happened, an event or a series of events uh, to give you this problem, this condition, this diagnosis, whatever it is. Now, it's either in the background running, scanning, it's not disrupting your life to the point where you can't live it, but you're on guard, you're not comfortable, you're sort of always turned on. It's in the foreground where it's distracting you from everything in your life, you're not able to participate in your life without this in the front of your mind, constant chatter in your brain, am I okay, am I safe, am I gonna be okay, what's gonna happen, me, 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 focus on the symptoms, focus on the feelings, focus on the fear, and the safety, am I safe, right? Or you've got a stop sign up, meaning I am no longer able to do certain things in my life. I can no longer function, I can no longer go here, participate here, do this, um, do things I used to be able to do. I can, I, I need to stay safer. I need to be safer. I need to rest, I need to lay down, I need to isolate, I need to uh, drop this and this and this and this. Um, and fully focus inward. And the reason that this happens is because the body is trying to protect you. Your body is not against you. Your mind is against you, but your body is not against you. Your body puts safety first. It puts safety above everything else, above everything else. So your body says, you don't feel safe. I'm not safe. I'm going to put checks and balances in place to make sure that you stay safe because that's my main goal, is that you don't die, you, you stay safe, nothing happens. And you put all these checks and balances and watches and everything in place where it's constantly your nervous system now, your nervous system, your unconscious nervous system is constantly scanning. Sometimes your subconscious or your conscious nervous system is also scanning and sometimes you're actually, um, your mind is involved and you're freezing and you're not doing anything and you're just totally dysfunctional on all levels, okay? So this is what happens when you have a major diagnosis in your life or a problem or a long-term condition. These are the same patterning systems at play. And it's because your body's trying to keep you safe, it's trying to keep you alive, and that's its main purpose. So. How do we undo this? How do we unravel this? Well, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Even though the shock trauma um, happened overnight, possibly, or condition of events happened very quickly, or whether it took many years to develop this condition. Um, safety is number one, so it can happen in an instant, okay? Your body can switch from not scanning, not trying to keep you safe, to trying to keep you safe every second, 24 hours of the day, 24 seven, in an instant, if your nervous system registers that it is warranted, okay? But to unravel that, it doesn't happen in an instant because you have to convince your nervous system that you are safe. And in order to convince your nervous system that you are safe, your mind has to believe that you're safe and you have to feel safe. Oh, my dogs are really going at it. They're actually playing. They're not biting, but this is how they do it. They sort of chase each other around. Anyways, so you have to convince your mind, your emotions, your heart, your brain, your feelings. You have to convince yourself, you have to trust in the world that you are safe in order to feel safe. And if you are tricking your nervous system or just repeating affirmations or just doing exercises but you don't believe it, your nervous system might get somewhat better. It might um, be able to heal from stopping, 
to continuously scanning or it might even be able to put it in the background. But you're never going to get rid of it unless you can trust and fully believe, fully, fully believe and trust that you are safe. So the question becomes, how do we feel safe? What types of things can we set up in our life in order to tell our nervous system that we're safe, that we're safe, and that it can shut off. It can turn the switch off. It is okay to do that because you don't need to survive. You don't need that continual watch in order to survive. You are safe, okay? So it's an on-off switch as to whether I'm safe or I'm not safe. If you feel like you're not safe somewhere in your mind or body or subconscious or whatever, your nervous system is scanning because it's supposed to. It wants to keep you alive. We have to tell it to turn off. And the only way we can do that is if we can convince it, tell it, and feel at our deepest level that we are safe. Then it will turn off. And then when it turns off, you can heal. You can start to heal. You can start to integrate back into life. You can start to take on those activities again. You can start to heal your illnesses. You can start to overcome pain. You can start to do all these things because your nervous system has a break from the high alert. So I will do another video about pain and how we can keep ourselves feeling safe because it is the key to unlocking these chronic conditions.